Of all the giant, powerful, armor-clad enemies in video games, the two-handed axe-wielding metallic giants named Iron Knuckles are some of the most memorable. From their presentation to their fight mechanics, they're one of the most intimidating enemies out there. Especially if you're six-year-old me just trying to beat the Spirit Temple in Ocarina of Time for the first time because my sister called me too chicken to do it. Um, anyways, like with many monsters from the Zelda universe, their entire existence is pretty much a mystery, as is their completely shrouded origin. Iron Knuckles are also oftentimes confused for the very similar Dark Nuts, who are also, you know, large, humanoid, armor-clad, knight-like enemies. I mean, the confusion's understandable, but while these enemies do have their similarities, their true natures could not be more different. And before I get into the meat of the video, I just wanted to throw out there that my last video covered Dark Nuts and their potential connections to Link. Yes, you heard me correctly, the hero Link himself. And I'll actually be spoiling that video a bit in this one to make some of the points about Iron Knuckles that I'll be making, so if you want my full theory on Dark Nuts before going into this video, then click on that tiny little button in the top right of your screen to go watch it real quick, then come back of course, or follow the link in the description below. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't done that already for all the epic Nintendo stuff to come. But that's enough of that, let's talk Iron Knuckles. The Knuckles' first appearance was in Ocarina of Time. Just kidding, I lied. Their actual first appearance was way back when in the Dark Ages when horribly pixelated sprites were referred to as good graphics. Back in the 80s. In Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, which is arguably the best Zelda game ever made. Sorry, I lied again. Iron Knuckles are recurring enemies and even bosses that Link has to face in his adventure. Ultimately, they served to replace the darkness from the previous game, Zelda 1, as the new Night like enemy for the new game. Their second and exponentially better known appearance was in Ocarina of Time, when they appear in the Spirit Temple as these giant emotionless axe swinging enemies. But between their two appearances, there are some pretty major changes in design that took place. The first is more like a classical looking knight. In fact, their original design is very similar to that of the original Dark Knight, what with the horned helmet, cape, and sword and shield combo. The second and final appearance design is more akin to a middle Eastern Knight, with the patterned cloth and pointed shoes. They also lose the sword and shield and instead fight with a massive two-handed double-bladed axe. That's probably used for more than chopping wood. So the first question we're going to look at is this one right here. What's the difference between the old Iron Knuckles from Zelda 2 and the newer ones from, you know, every other appearance? I think it's the difference of affiliation. The first Iron Knuckles we see in Zelda 2 are Hylian Knuckles, and the ones from Ocarina of Time and onward are Gerudo Knuckles, if you will. They're they're similar to each other in that they're, you know, big armor-wearing enemies, but they're not necessarily related to one another. To explain that answer, I'm gonna go out on a limb and suggest something that may sound kinda weird at first, but bear with me, it'll make sense. I believe the term Iron Knuckle that we refer to these enemies by is less of a statement about that kind of enemy, and more of a reference to that enemy's rank or level. Here's why I think that. In the official handbook of Zelda 2, the Iron Knuckles are referred to as being, quote, an Iron Warrior chosen in by the king, end quote. It also states that they can take many forms, but I personally believe that's simply a reference to the different levels of difficulty they spawn at as evidenced by the different colors they wear, orange, red, and blue. But I want to focus on that first part. They're chosen by the king. The king? Which king? When you take into account that Ganon is the king of evil, and, you know, Iron Knuckles are kinda evil, it may be tempting to assume that this king the book is referring to is actually Ganon, the king of evil. But the book also refers to, quote, the king, end quote, when it references the king's tomb, which is the burial site of the old king of Hyrule. With these enemies also being local to Hyrule Castle, it's safer to assume that the king that chose the Iron Knuckles was none other than the king of Hyrule himself. Oh but then why are they attacking Link, you ask? Oh, I don't know, Ganon's corruption, or maybe as a test for the hero or something like that. The Hylian Knuckles' hostility towards Link is not as important to this theory as what they are, which is chosen Hylian warriors. Now, the next logical question would be, does this mean that they are the fabled Hylian Knights of legend? Well, as I talked more in-depth about in my previous Dark Nut theory, the Hylian Knights are actually a group of people whose knightly heritage is passed by bloodline, as in you are born into it, not chosen. I believe the Hylian Knights are the Dark Nuts, which actually fits here because Iron Knuckles aren't related to anyone. They're chosen into their positions, not born into them, like the Knights of Hyrule are. Their similarity to Dark Nuts instead of the other Iron Knuckles from other games is due to the fact that 
that these iron knuckles are Hylian, not Gerudo. So that's the Hylian knuckles in a nut shell. Elite Chosen Warriors of Hyrule. Now, let's talk about the real reason why you're here. The Gerudo knuckles, which are a much different beast. Now, this is where things get real interesting, and just a quick disclaimer, I'm going to piece out everything we know about the Gerudo Knuckles and then give my guess as to what it all means. But be warned, this is a pretty wild theory. You might want to buckle up. So firstly, the Iron Knuckles from Ocarina of Time are only found in the Spirit Temple and Ganondorf's castle. In the Spirit Temple, pots are constantly flying around the place and it's generally considered to be pretty haunted. But by what? I'll get to that later. As you fight the Iron Knuckles, of which there are only three in the Spirit Temple, their armor falls off, revealing a rather slender, more feminine form beneath. And the final knuckle is actually straight up revealed to be a brainwashed Naburu. And for those of you who don't know who she is, she's a Gerudo leader who awakens later on as the Sage of Spirit. Kind of really important to Zelda lore. The witches behind her brainwashing and most likely the ones behind the haunting of the Spirit Temple in general are known as the twin sisters Kotake and Kaume, or together as Twin Rova. These crazy 400 year old sisters are revealed by Navi to be Ganondorf's surrogate mothers, which would explain their, you know, evil nature and devotion to their son Ganondorf's reign. They directly admit to Naburu's brainwashing and even threaten to repeat the process, which Link of course puts a stop to by, you know, sending them upwards in a beam of light to heaven because he killed them. Anyway, because they were responsible for Naburu's blank brain, it's only natural to assume that they were behind Naburu's iron knuckle status as well, which means we can apply this to each of the other iron knuckles found in the game. Now, put a pin in Twin Rova's connection to the Iron Knuckles. I'll get back to that in just a bit. Let's talk about Naburu. When she was in the suit, she did some pretty awesome stuff, right? Like, she possessed superhuman strength, apparently summoned a weapon out of thin air, and even had a completely different voice. But unless the Iron Knuckle suits were made by Stark Industries, this needs some explaining. It's obvious that her physical abilities were greatly altered and improved when she was in the Iron Knuckle armor. Outside of it, and don't get me wrong, Gerudo women are pretty tough stuff. But I find it very hard to believe that Naburu possesses that kind of raw strength on her own. Swinging a weapon of that size and being able to smash through those stone pillars is not something anyone of normal human capacity can do. I think that much is pretty obvious. So where did the augmentation of her physical strength come from? Her brainwashing? I don't think so. But that means it must have come from the iron knuckle armor itself. There's another individual in particular that I think can help shed some light on this whole conundrum. In the game Oracle of Seasons, the big baddie for this adventure is known as General Onox. Onyx? And even though he's only ever referred to as a general and never a knuckle or iron boy, looking at his armor, he should look pretty familiar because it's literally exactly the same as Gerudo Knuckle armor from Ocarina of Time, just drawn in a different art style. I mean, there's the pointed toes, the printed cloth, the same plated armor, and even the same color. And this isn't just some cool looking armor the developers wanted him to wear. No, they specifically recreated Gerudo Knuckle armor in a completely new art style. And in case anybody had any questions, solidified the Gerudo connection with the symbol on his chest where otherwise he has no connections to the Gerudo. They were obviously getting at something here. If you look at the other Oracle game, the Oracle of Ages, the antagonist in that adventure is known as Veran, who is most likely a female Gerudo since she's dark skinned, has red hair, and the Gerudo symbol in multiple places on her armor. There's already a hint of something bigger going on here involving all this Gerudo symbolism, but spoiler alert, the nail in the coffin is the fact that at the end of either game, it's revealed that both antagonists of these games were summoned by you guessed it, Twin Rova, who we know is both a powerful Gerudo witch slash witches and responsible for the Iron Knuckles of Ocarina of Time. Pretty interesting stuff, right? But there's a really specific detail I want to zoom in on and highlight. The only thing non-Gerudo in this entire picture would be General Onox, or rather, whoever's in the armor. Even though this armor is clearly branded Gerudo armor, if you look closer, and not to get needlessly racial, Onox does look to be more fair skinned than most of the Gerudo we normally see. He's also a male, further lessening the chances of him being a Gerudo, as a male Gerudo in the all-female race of Gerudos is kind of a big deal. So why is he, a non-Gerudo, here, wearing Gerudo knuckle armor, serving Twin Rova, showing off a pretty obvious Gerudo symbol on his chest? What does this tell us? Well, what if the point of every Gerudo knuckle armor we've ever seen isn't who's wearing the armor, but the armor itself? Alright, I hope you're ready, because things are about to get 
real crazy up in here. At the end of the game, Oracle of Seasons, General Iron Knuckle Onox reveals to the player that his true form is that of a dark dragon from the Dark Realm. He claims he was summoned by Twin Rova. Now, what is the Dark Realm, you ask? Great question, because it's not the same thing as the Dark World we all know and love. You know, the one with that catchy theme. The Dark Realm has only ever been coined one other time in the Zelda universe, and that is in the game Spirit Tracks, the most popular Zelda game of all time. In the game, the Dark Realm is where the Demon Train is, and where the Demon King Maladus makes his escape. In summary, I believe the evidence we have in the game would allow us to conclude that the Dark Realm is the realm of demons. And Twin Rova has been summoning entities from its depths as we see from Onux's true dark dragon form. I think Twin Rova has been summoning these demons or entities from the Dark Realm for a while now, explaining the Spirit Temple's haunted status, and they can either infuse them into the temple itself or into suits of armor that we know as Iron Knuckle suits. The thing is, these demonically powered super suits need a host, kind of like an Iron Man suit. You know, from that one movie or whatever. And if you place a brainwashed host in a super suit, well, you've got yourself a super powered super soldier who will obey your every command, which is why we see brainwashed people being used for the suits. Furthermore, the fact that Gerudo women were used for the suits in Ocarina of Time and the non-Gerudo man was used in Oracle of Seasons, this proves both that the suits need a host to operate, but also that the suits, though affiliated with the Gerudo or Twin Rova, do not necessarily need the host to share the same race. Twin Rova probably just used whoever was around as a host, and in the Gerudo desert, that means Gerudo women. This could also explain why the Gerudo Knuckles voices are so different than what their hosts naturally sound like. Because what if that isn't their voice you're hearing, but the voice of the suit of a demon from the Dark Realm. And that is my crazy theory regarding the super-powered Iron Knuckles of the Zelda franchise. What do you think? Am I onto something, or am I really just insane? One thing I will briefly mention before wrapping up is that, yes, there are Iron Knuckles in Majora's Mask, but commenting on their relation to Ocarina of Time's Iron Knuckles would mean I have to comment on how I believe the entire realm of Termina is connected, and I'd rather just not get into that in this video because it's already gone on long enough. So, for now at least, they will remain a mystery. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed watching and check out some of my other stuff while you're at it. As always, huge thanks to my supporters, of which I have so many new faces. Welcome to Colin F, Ezra, Annie Stone, Just Inside Gaming, Jack Simmons, Felix K, Plushy101, Christina Adams, Phone Guy Tim, Flash K, and Thomas McClure. You guys are so amazing and I so greatly appreciate all the support that you're giving me. I recently rolled out channel memberships and the response has been amazing. If you're interested in getting your name up here at the end of all of my videos and some really cool emoji to use in the comments and a really cool badge by your name, click the join button below or go to my Patreon link via the link in the description below. Support starts at just $1. Also in the description are links to my social media pages, so come on over and say hi. That's all I've got in this one, so I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, everyone. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit signing out. Peace.